All right, what's up, guys? Um, as always, I want to start this off by letting you know the situation I'm currently embroiled in. Um, my four-year-old's school is closed for President's Day for some reason that is unclear to me. Um, as such, today's video will likely be a bit shorter than usual. Um, to be totally frank with you, I cannot leave him. Uh, he's not unattended, but he's in like the next room, and he's super crazy. So I, 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 I can't trust him for any length of time like that. Um, and also, kind of stemming from that description, uh, he, he may join us. He may just come crashing in. I, I have very little control over the situation. Uh, so we'll just see how that goes. Anyway, what we're looking at today, it's on screen, obviously. Um, and I've included it as a separate document on Course Den, um, whichever one works for you. The good news about today's uh, a document, I suppose, is that it's short enough it can fit on the screen entirely, so you may not need that separate document. All right, what do we have? This is, um, I hope it's clear, an introduction from one of your classmates. Uh, I want to concentrate completely on that today uh, for a couple reasons, but anyway, let's get right into it. All right, to begin with, uh, if you have not already, go ahead and pause the video, read over this guy, uh, take just a minute. Go ahead and do that. I'll give you a second. Go. All right. Sorry about that weird noise. Um, so what do we have here? Obviously, they're writing about the Rogan and Pacman podcast. Uh, they have some thoughts on it that we're going to discuss. Discuss. Sorry. The first thing I want to do, um, as we've done probably with the past couple videos, I want to break this guy up into its parts. And of course, to do that, we first have to think about what parts are we talking about? There are four parts to an introduction. Yes, there's a hook, which is optional. There's your introduction to the text, which we'll talk about. There's a roadmap, which is very important. And then there's a thesis, which I would say, you guys are probably of the opinion it's the most important. In some ways it is. I would say it's probably equally uh, of equal importance to the roadmap. Uh, anyway, what do we have here? Well, your introduction to the text, uh, because we don't have a hook, obviously, right? Your introduction to the text, what is it meant to accomplish? It's two things. One, title and author, if you have those, and a summary, a brief summary. Now, it's kind of weird because it's a podcast. You're like, is there an author? I mean, you, you know, there's, there's two people in it, and they create the conversation that we're talking about, so they kind of author that conversation. Of course... The episode does have a title. It's the Joe Rogan Experience. I forget the number off the top of my head. It's a big number. Um, all told, you probably want to try to include that, but it's honestly not the end of the world in this case due to the nature of the text, right? On the flip side, if you're doing John Oliver, that's like a straight-up television show. Uh, they, that name is kind of broadcast everywhere. It's just a little bit different. Either way... You probably want to include the title. But what do we have here? We do have an introduction to the text. We bring up Rogan. We bring up Pacman. We bring up... Uh, I wouldn't even use uh, affiliation. I don't know if that's the right term because Pacman isn't quote-unquote affiliated. Like that, that word's actually a little bit strong. He's definitely... Uh, both of these guys are, are on the left uh, sort of side of the spectrum, I suppose. Pacman's probably to the left of Rogan. Um, but all that said... I don't know how applicable that really is to the conversation. Like, they touch on that stuff a little bit uh, about halfway through. Uh, but, I mean, what, maybe that's a solid two or three minutes of the conversation. It's just not the main idea at all. So I just, I don't know if it's important enough to start off our paper, right? Um, they move from there to these quote-unquote social issues, which, of course, I would like to know more about that, and they define it better here. But what does that really mean? All right, so these first three sentences really are our introduction to the text, okay? All right, that means hopefully a big chunk of this is our roadmap because we need that. And then somewhere toward the bottom, as uh, you guys have been trained, right, your thesis should occur. So where is it? I'm going to say... It's right about here. Now, why is that, first of all? Well, I guess I should come right out and say, leave yourself out of the paper, uh, first of all. So this student's quote-unquote take on the situation, just leave that out uh, for a couple of reasons. But the, the biggest one, 
I know it's your take on the situation because you're telling me, right? So you you don't need to do that. Just tell me whatever your argument is and go from there. Save yourself that room. Now, of course, there are some issues with their argument that we're going to talk about when we get to the thesis. But at the very least, as I like to point out, we do have all the parts, okay? You got to do that. If you don't have all the parts... I mean, you kind of set yourself up for failure most of the time. Okay. Let's start actually at the very top. We got all this stuff about uh, party affiliation again. I don't think that's super useful. Uh, We quickly, fortunately, move to what they actually spend the bulk of their time on. And then we get here. To me, this is really the only viable bit of summary that we have. So, you know, what do we do? Maybe something like Joe Rogan and David Pakman. Uh, and then this is not going to be the most fun, but to discuss how the YouTube bloopers are there. Okay. By the way, again, all that political stuff they were kind of starting with, I think. It it gets folded in here. Like, that's as much as it matters. That's the only real uh, discussion it warrants. And again, they go down this huge rabbit hole here, but that's not most of what they talk about. Um, Anyway, if you had more to say, and I think it'd be good because mostly I'm, I'm concerned with this. This is their main idea. We get another sentence or two, and I think we could all manage that, on how YouTube, and you guys may be less familiar with YouTube comments, but basically how social media... Uh, internet exchange generally tends toward the toxic because uh, it absolutely does. Um, this discussion uh, in this podcast is a couple years old, but it's still completely applicable. Basically, uh, if you go online, you are bound to encounter some jerks, right? I mean, we can all, I think, pretty safely agree on that, unfortunately. So again, just one more, one or two more sentences telling me in what way is this toxic uh, or something to that effect, right? Okay. <clears throat> but generally speaking, we got our introduction to the text. We're good to go. The roadmap here, again, well, I mean, if you need to, I'm going to actually read over it real quick just to refresh my memory, so go ahead and do that as well. So what do we do? The big mistake this student makes, and, and this can happen in this assignment in particular, um, they're pretty much entirely focused on their reaction to the podcast, like their response to it, if that makes sense. Um, I think that happens because, you know, when we say, how does the audience respond to this stuff, these rhetorical techniques, what have you, um, you are a part of that audience. So of course, in some way, I'm kind of saying, how do you respond? But you'll notice I'm never explicitly saying, how do you respond, right? Like you, you have to, to the best of your ability, try to appreciate, like you are a part of the audience usually, um, but that doesn't mean it's just you, right? So especially this stuff, I mean, if you are in line with what Pacman said or whatever, right? There's, there's just no place for that in this paper, Okay. And also, I mean, the the real reason I'm going to cut this is it leads us down a path that, like, it just isn't the assignment, right? So what are we left with? We cut that one sentence. We haven't lost a lot. The bad news is, again, a lot of this really isn't what we're supposed to be doing. Like, it's just not the assignment, okay? But I always like to point this out to you guys. Even when uh, I tell you you got to change a lot of stuff or cut things or whatever, the good news is we do have a starting point here. We we cite some specific moments in the text, uh, some specific elements that we could then very easily sort of write about in the way that we're meant to, okay? So what am I talking about? Well, <clears throat> let's go back and look at what we have. First of all, that's a banal statement, right? That That's a really long way of saying everybody has different opinions. Let's cut that. All right, this is getting to something. This sounds a whole lot like maybe what they meant when they said that, right? Cool. So that tells me we are very much concerned with this 
portion of their discussion. The um, the polarization of, uh, I mean, given how this student is writing about it, uh, the polarization of political rhetoric. But really, uh, again, to get to more to the heart of what Rogan and Pacman are talking about, that just the polarization of people generally, like, um, it, it's probably Rogan that says this, but something to the effect of, you know, if you don't agree, I mean, I'm paraphrasing here, but like, if you don't agree with me totally, then I'm just going to write you off, right? Like, I, I want nothing to do with you uh, because like you're the enemy all of a sudden. Like, that's that's the kind of polarization they're getting at. Well, we can... St- Honestly, I was going to say we could start this way. I was trying to be nice. We really shouldn't. We should start in the text, okay? So I'm actually, because, uh, again, I I promised you guys this one would be shorter, and also I just heard my son uh, possibly tip something over. I'm not sure what that was. But uh, so let's let's make some notes here. Um, Let's see. Our first point is going to be maybe their discussion of polarization, okay? And I'm going to explain what we do with these notes, but we're going to make some notes right now. All right, a lot of these debates become heated. They can divide the population. I mean, okay. Um, there's more conf- I mean, they, you notice, too, none of this is about the text. It's It's adjacent to the text. It's talking about maybe ideas that, the people in the podcast are interested in, but it's not actually talking about the podcast itself. So that's a good, that's a big sign that we've kind of missed the mark. Um, Here, these like heated debates, I want to think of something specific from the text. The easiest one I can think of is really the big reason Pac-Man is on the show. You know, that woman tried to get him fired. Um, I'll just call it the the Pac-Man firing attempt. Again, we go back and look at that moment in the podcast, something from their discussion of that uh, attempt. That'd be cool. Um, and then they're talking about speaking our opinions, understand, uh, create an opinion, make comment. I mean, again, they kind of lose me at the end there, but I, I guess maybe, and I'm, I'm reaching here a little bit because I'm not quite clear on what they're getting at in that last bit. Okay, so here's what we do now. Again, this will be painful, but everything I just deleted, again, it gave us this, okay? It did, and now what we would do, we would go back to the text, and we would say, well, where do they talk about this, this, this? Um, What what rhetorical techniques do they use in those moments uh, that I want to focus on? What, Of course, what are the effects of those uh, techniques, and then how am I going to critique them? Uh, let's take on one as an, as an example, the most specific that we have, the quote-unquote Pac-Man firing attempt. How does that go? He tells this whole story um, relatively quickly, I suppose, about how uh, this woman tweeted a thing about, uh, again, I'm paraphrasing for the sake of time, but uh, she tweeted a thing about not voting in the midterms, for anybody, uh, I believe it said who was white or male, and then uh, Pac-Man basically implied, uh, without saying it, and again, that's an interesting point. We might that might be some that detail that we consider, but he basically implies that that's that's probably more than a little sexist and more than a little racist, right? To just dismiss people based off gender and and race, um, so. What about that? Well, again, I, it's kind of interesting to me that in the original tweet that he talks about sending to this person, he doesn't use those terms. Um, and they both kind of talk about that. Like, for instance, uh, Rogan makes the point, I think a couple of times, he feels like if you're going to say that to a person, right, that that's probably one of the most polite ways to do it. Now, let's let's sit on that for a second. Really consider, like, if you felt like you needed to tell somebody that you, you thought they were being sexist and or racist, how would you go about that? Like, you, I, I think, again, we all realize if you do that in some situation, you know, online or whatever, you're really probably going to piss that person off, right? Okay, 
is there a polite way to do it? Or at the very least, is there a more polite way to do it? And I guess what I'm getting at here, I'm trying to entertain the thought that they bring up in there, uh, in this bit of the discussion. It is interesting, I think, like, all right, well, let's, let's get some of this down. Sorry, I'm thinking to you. I should be writing for you. Um, first, let's describe what we're talking about. This is how you spell her name. I'm pretty sure that's right. I'm trying to think of a not awkward way to put this, but basically for uh, pointing out issues with uh, pointing out issues. Oh, thanks, Microsoft Store. Uh, he had all right, when describing all that Okay, so why did I say all that? Well, a couple things I want to point out to you very quickly. The fact that this is two guys talking, like I almost said he or him a couple times, uh, you're going to have to be very clear if you write about this podcast which guy you're talking about. So I'm not saying you can't ever use he or him or his, but you got to be really picky because oftentimes it's going to get confusing when you do that. So you're going to use these guys' names a lot, basically. Um, but anyway, we described what they're talking about, right? This woman uh, tried to get him fired, right? Um, because they had like a Twitter tiff. Um, and again, the, the moment, though, that we're highlighting in the text that we're going to consider is this. That I think he says it at least twice, if not more, that Given the circumstances, given the fact that he's heavily implying that she's being more than a little sexist, more than a little racist, it's pretty polite. Like, it's it's one of the more, I, I think I agree, one of the more polite ways to put that, okay? So what about that? What not, and again, I want to be clear, we're not as focused on, I mean, you could consider it because context matters. We're not as focused on, though, him possibly getting fired because this woman is upset or any of that stuff. What we're focused on is whether or not he did it politely and the fact that Rogan points that out, right? What about that? What is the effect of that little moment on the audience? Um, and I guess, re well, we'll start there. What is the effect of it? The way I think I'm reading it is... I mean, I already said, I think I'm inclined to agree, um, but why is that? Well, uh, it's kind of what I was trying to get into earlier, but then I remembered I'm not, I wasn't writing anything. I was just talking at you. Um, that's a really, it's pretty much always going to be a very incendiary thing to say to a person, right? I mean, again, I don't know your life. I know mine, but think about if you've ever been like at a holiday dinner with your family and we all got people in our family we don't agree with or whatever and they might say something or you might want to say something and you don't right why don't you <laughs> because you know it's just going to start something right like you know that already given the context of the situation i think you could say the same, uh, the same thing here there's kind of no way <coughs> there's kind of no way to point that out to somebody online and them not get at least a little bit defensive, at least a little bit upset, probably, right? So going in, we already know that that's on the table, but the way that he puts it, which is he never uses those words, um, these guys feel like it's polite. Why, why make that point, I guess is what I'm saying. I, th I think what they're getting at is he softens that message, right? Like he feels, uh, Pacman does, he feels like it's a message worth 
making, but he also recognizes he actually wants this woman to maybe hear him or, or not dismiss him um, entirely just because she's like upset or whatever, which of course that sounds like that's what happens. Um, so he softens that incendiary message. That's interesting. Again, not just the fact that he did that originally, because that's technically not even in our text, but the fact that these both these guys acknowledge that. Rogan acknowledges that, okay? Ooh, thanks, Google. By acknowledging... Okay. Soften such an incendiary idea... Um, encourages the audience to side with Pac-Man um, really that's not even necessary that's a given okay so right now all we've done um, I want to be clear I mean I, I know I've said that a lot this first sentence is kind of a long description of what we're talking about. Um, part of that is because we don't have like much detail in our introduction to the text. Depending on what our roadmap says or has in it, some of this information could probably actually be included up here. It wouldn't need to be down here, okay? But because we don't have it up here, it's showing up here. All right. Our analysis starts in the second sentence by acknowledging the way in which Pacman softens such an incendiary idea, Rogan encourages the audience to side with Pacman. That's rhetorical analysis. Okay. It's not quite critique. Um, and there's different ways to handle this next part, but again, I want to show you as simply as I can, because if nothing else, I want to make it very clear um, what it is we're trying to do in this paper. You could do this. Check it out. All of a sudden, that's critique, right? It is not always that simple, but in this one case, it is. Um, now, again, if you wanted to take the opposite tack, if you wanted to say, uh, I mean, you'd have to write it somewhat differently because that just the way this is built makes it sound like he does a pretty good job, right? Pointing out that that's polite. But you could say, uh, I mean, well unsuccessfully encourages the audience. I mean, basically, that's a little ham-fisted because, again, the way we've written this doesn't quite make sense up to this point. But my point is, always, 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 you are performing rhetorical analysis first, which is this whole second sentence, basically. But somewhere in there, or right after it, or your main idea needs to be, whether or not you feel like um, the text, whatever uh, moment you're highlighting, has successfully uh, sort of helped out the argument that they're after. And in this particular case, the, the part of the argument we're focused on is Rogan is, I would say, unintentionally maybe encouraging us to side with Pacman here in this little uh, story that he's telling us, right? There are other ways to take that, by the way. Another idea could be, you know, we could just for the sake of, by acknowledging, you know, the soften such an incendiary idea, Rogan, what? The, I don't want to use that word again, but, okay, difficult. That's another sort of implicit argument that he's making. Like, you can make multiple arguments at the same time. Implicit, by the way, just means he's not coming out and saying it. He again, he, he this could be entirely unintentional. We we say things unintentionally all the time, but in this uh, particular case, he's acknowledging the fact that Pacman softened it. So he's also sort of saying that we all realize Pacman probably had to soften it, given the content of the conversation he was trying to have with this woman. Right? Well, again. In this particular case, I think he's successful there. Uh, so, again, another easy fix would be, look at that. Successfully points out, okay, cool, that works. You could make the counterpoint uh, if we were going to say he's unsuccessful. 
uh, by acknowledging the way, see again, you'd have to change this a little bit, by acknowledging the fact that software is doing it, by, um, by, let me see, Something like that, right? Because he again, he keeps saying Pac-Man was polite. He never really comes out and says, "Oh yeah, you had to do that because blah 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 blah." Again, I feel like that's unfair to the text because at some point a text just can't come right out and say everything, right? Like a lot of things have to be implicit. But if you felt that way for one reason or another, that might be one way to do it. Okay. In terms of the thesis, we're almost done, I promise. Because again, mostly I'm just super nervous for whatever my four-year-old is doing in the next room. Um, this, again, starts out with that my take business. That already tells you it's not really what the assignment is about. Um, they they have a really interesting idea for how society, society should be. Um, but that's just not what we're doing here. Okay. Um, they do seem to be interested in, I mean, in some ways, like this conversation about free speech. So again, that tells me, number one, our third point here is on the money. It's absolutely something they're interested in, in the podcast. So that would be the next part of our roadmap. Uh, you'd need probably at least one more part of your roadmap up here. After you do that, then you can figure out a thesis. <clears throat> and again, we don't have their roadmap, so we can't do that for them here. But it would be something like this, right? Um, hmm. like, Okay, so again, we cannot craft a thesis today based on what we have because we just don't have it, okay? Um, but for all of us, this is what we're doing. Whether you're writing about Oliver or Rogan and Pacman, this is pretty much what your thesis is trying to do. Uh, I say generally there in the first sentence because your roadmap is going to spell out in detail, okay? Generally given what we had before, and I know I erased all of it. Um, <clears throat> generally, it seems like this student is interested in the fact that these two guys are, are talking about basically how we won't hear each other online, right? Like, again, the, a, a big point in Pacman's story is how he... I mean, I'm, again, I'm inclined to believe him because he, he just seems like a nice guy, basically. That's rhetoric, too, by the way. He just seems nice. If he seemed like a jerk, I think we'd be less inclined to hear him, right? Believe him. But anyway, given the way they talk about it, um, it seems like there's the big idea they're swirling around is how people just can't hear each other online, just won't hear each other online. How do they go, how do they go about that? Uh, they support this main idea with personal anecdotes from Pac-Man. Um, they, they dive into sort of corporate structure when it comes to YouTube and, and uh, Twitter, you know. Um, maybe that's my first sentence in my thesis, something like that, you know. And then, do I think they're successful? Well, yeah. I mean, generally, I think they're pretty successful in proving <clears throat> uh, or in highlighting maybe that we, we're, we're less and less inclined to talk to one another, exchange ideas, what have you, online. Um, and if I wanted to put it somewhere in between, I could I can include a however. However, there are places such as when Rogan um, sort of incorrectly 
well, I don't know, so, uh, however, there are places um, that that don't work as well, such as when Rogan cites this uh, oft disproved narrative uh, that major corporations um, have a liberal bias, you know, something like that. Again, that's not in this guy's roadmap, so they, that may or may not be a part of his paper. I'm just trying to think, uh, uh, I'm trying to give you an example of um, how to maybe, but, but again, uh, to, a counterpoint to that thesis I just gave you, uh, Rogan gives us that narrative about these major tech corporations being liberal, and then Pacman, I think, pretty succinctly, not only disproves it, but explains it to Rogan, and it, it seems like Rogan kind of comes around, right? Like, you watch in real time a 50-year-old man be convinced. Like, uh, that's that's kind of wild. Anyway, my point is, it very much depends upon what elements from the text you're going to talk about in your paper, how you're going to critique those elements. That's going to de- obviously determine what your thesis looks like, but all of our thesis statements should pretty much try to answer these questions. If you can do that, I think you're headed in a good direction. Um, as I said, uh, I've posted the original document to Corsten. I suppose it might also help. I'm going to post uh, this copy to Corsten 2, um, and I'll label them you know, differently so you can tell the difference. Otherwise, uh, oh, next time. For next time, our rough drafts are due. That's turnitin.com. And uh, yeah, that's all I got. Uh, I hope my house is not on fire. I hope yours is not too. And yeah, I'll talk to you next time. Thank you.